man that has relocated from Oakland, California, about a year. Really happy to have him in Ghana. He's a true soldier for development, and I want him to share with you some of the projects, some of the ideas, and some of the things that he's working on, uh, so you can get a good idea for some of the projects that uh, that is going on here in Ghana, and some of the opportunities. So I would like to present to you Mr. Kwame and Toto. Let's speak. Greetings, family. Greetings. As my brother just said, my name is Kwame Toto. I just relocated to Ghana last year. I'm a licensed real estate professional. And I really appreciate the wisdom the brother just gave me. I was retired in 2016 from a very successful career in California real estate. And I moved to Ghana really to do nothing but just retire and just chill. You know, I love it here. It's a beautiful place to be. I fell in love with Ghana. And, um, <clears throat> I didn't know what I was doing, Don, but then after I got here, I realized that it was a great opportunity in real estate for me to market real estate to my friends in California because people want to have a nice retirement home. I can tell you, retirement home in Ghana is an excellent idea. <clears throat> so I started doing just that, and I will tell you that. I currently have six properties I'm, I'm marketing right now. One is actually a, a nice three bedroom, three bedroom house not far from here. It's called East Adon Hills. It's a, Beautiful brand new home, $75,000. Beautiful brand new home. So my expertise is already built homes. And the reason why it is is because I don't know enough to help you with land acquisition. And if anybody's interested in land acquisition, I would recommend you find a professional like this brother right here that can assist you because it can be very complicated and you really need to have somebody that knows what they're doing. This is why I wouldn't even assist a person with land acquisition because I don't know enough to assist you. I can't have a assistant with already built brand new homes. So that's what I do. Um, but that's not why I came to speak tonight. Tonight I came to speak to you because when I came to Ghana last year, um, I had a couple of very interesting experiences. The first one was I was learning how to do the phone thing because phones are a little different. I don't know if you guys have had that experience yet, but you have to get credits on your phone. And me being a person who's not from that generation, I always need help. My grandchildren do that for me. I don't, I don't do the phone. My grandchildren does that for me. So I needed help. So I went to a phone store to get help with my phone, and while I was there, an elder came in behind me, an older sister, she must have been about 85 years old, and she walked to the front of the line, and the gentleman that was the clerk that gave her a bunch of money, he told everybody, excuse me, he stacked this money he was collecting all day in this bag for this woman. And I'm standing in line watching it, and I was noticing that they weren't trying to hide the money. They were just putting this money in this bag, and, and then he gave it back to the lady, and she just walked out the door. And I was like, wow. Because I'm from Oakland, you know, I'm from Oakland, California. <laughs> uh, I've never seen that. <laughs> okay. And so curiosity, I couldn't take it. I had to pick it out to see. Because there was nobody with her. She was by herself. I, I figured she must be getting in a car. And she was walking down the street with this bag of money. I said, my God. So I went, when I got to where I was staying with my host, I shared the story with his wife. And she was looking at me like, see, I'm, I'm telling her this story about this lady in this money. This lady just walking up through this big old bag of money. She's just looking at me, right? And like, somebody could just push the plate down and take the money and just run off with this money. And she was looking at me. And finally, after a while, she just leaned in real close to me. She said, no one thinks like that in Ghana. And she was looking at me like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the end of the story. So about a couple of days later, my niece came to Ghana to participate in this uh, manifest last year. And I went to the airport to greet her. And while I was there, there was a police officer in the lobby where I was waiting. And he kept looking at me. And again, I'm from Oakland, so when the police are looking at me, I get upset when the police are looking at me. I'm just used to getting upset. So, keep, so the brother was looking at me. He looked at me and looked up. He said, I stopped looking at him. Why is he looking at me? So I start frowning like I put After a few moments, the young man went across the room and picked up a big chair and sat down in the front of the chair. And he turned and looked at me. He said, Daddy, he says, you're coming. He walked up to me as lovingly as possible. 
and walked me to this chair and sat me down. And I thought, oh my God, something is wrong with me. <laughs> I brought the stuff with me. I brought the gun with me. The gun. And then when I came back to California, someone was, we had a little gathering and I was having a little thing and people asked me questions and one person asked me, said, Tommy, what did you learn most about your trip? And the answer was, I don't want to heal from this stuff. I want to get well. I, I don't want to be like this no more. Always, my fists always balled up, you know, protecting myself because I don't have to be that way anymore. You know? And so I developed a project called the Wellness Program. So I'm going to get well. And um, what I'm looking for today is some people that want to help me. I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to make money tonight. I love money, money loves me. I just, I love money. But right now I need somebody to help me help people get well. So I'm trying to create a wellness program in Ghana, a wellness center for people that want to relocate to Ghana, to come to Ghana, have a place to be, maybe a, a short-term residential place where you can stay for six months and you know, get, get your feet under you in Ghana because it's different and, and go through a wellness process that allows us to heal so that when we come to Ghana, we don't bring that stuff that, that Ghana don't need. And Marcus Garvey said that years ago when I studied, studied Marcus Garvey when I was in high school. And Marcus Garvey said, you know, we want to go back to Africa. We don't want to take everybody. I didn't understand that first, but now I do because I wanted to somebody to find out what got on the boat because I was so sick. And so, I got a wellness idea that I'd love to share with anybody. Um, I want to purchase a nice center. And, and land and real estate purchase in Ghana is interesting. You can't, it's not like you get a 30 year loan, you have to have a lot of upfront money. I don't have it all myself. I got a lot of it. I say about half. And so what I'm looking for is some people that want to invest with me to help me build this project model so that we can return to Ghana, have assistance, you know, like maybe assistance to get here like my brother does. He assists people all the time. But, and assistance is, is great when you come to a, a new place. But have some long-term care, some long-term support for people that want to relocate to Ghana and have some kind of process that allows us to come here and really bring our best to Ghana as opposed to just coming here with some toxic stuff that we got from, from that insanity that we all left from. And so again, my name is Kwame Nitoto. I'll be here to the end. I'm looking forward to meeting as many of you as I can. I have some cards. And um, I'm a real estate professional. If you want to buy a house, I can help you with that. And but I'm more than interested in talking to you about, about health and wellness and God. We appreciate your honesty because we all need the, the wellness. You know, you know, there's a saying, you know. We have to endure to the end. You know, and I always tell people, I'm trying to cross the finish line. When I cross the finish line, then I know I made it to the end. Or when they say I'm saved. <laughs> but when I was when they baptized me when I was 16, they told me I was saved. You know, you know, but I said I went in a wet sun and came out of dry sun. I went in a dry sun and came out of wet sun. <laughs> Nothing changed. I wasn't saved. So I told them goodbye, I need some saving. So moving full speed ahead.